Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. In case you guys do not know what Notion is, in their own words, Notion is a tool that blends your everyday work apps into one. It's the all-in-one workspace for you and your team. Notion is the sponsor for this video. It's a really great tool that people use for both team collaborations and also individually as well. What I think it's really known for is absolutely how flexible it is and how customizable it is. And I probably don't need to introduce Notion anymore because you've probably seen a bunch of videos already out there made by people who swear and live by Notion. To be honest, I don't use Notion for every aspect of my life. And the reason for this is because I tend to get overwhelmed easily and I'm also not a naturally organized person. Like organization does not come naturally to me. Where Notion really shines for me is in two specific settings. The first one is in a kind of team slash collaboration based setting. Because Notion is so flexible and so customizable, whatever the purpose or nature of the team or collaboration is, Notion allows you to customize it specifically to suit that purpose. And it actually feels really cohesive and tailored in branding. It's also really good for displaying different types of information as well as allowing people to collaborate effectively across the team. The second thing that I really like Notion for is kind of very simple specific purposes that take advantage of the flexibility and customizability. For example, I use it for tracking my trades and also to figure out what to do at the gym. In this video, I'm going to go through two examples of how I use Notion in a team or a collaboration based setting, as well as the two personal examples I talked about in how I track my trades and how I plan my gym workouts. Let's get started. So this is my team, uh, which consists of me, Tony, our wonderful editor, Maddie, you may know her from our study with Tina streams, as well as Chris, our newest member. So first of all, I want to say that full credit for this notion goes to Maddie and Chris. I think actually like last week, Chris made some pretty big overhaul changes, which I started using, which I'm really, really liking, and I'm really excited to use it more in the future. So everything in this notion is internal. So we have less emphasis in terms of branding, in terms of information, and it's much more focused in collaborations and having a lot of flexibility because there's often a lot of different moving parts. And Maddie and Chris designed this notion specifically with that in mind. This is what it looks like. We have this dashboard over here. Um, in terms of the main pages that you can click through as well as ongoing projects that you can click through over here and there's a little clock. So it's currently 3.14 p.m. on Sunday. <laughs> so clicking through to the projects tab over here. Projects is a database which holds all plan ongoing and past projects. So we do have some information being displayed as well, but this is mostly in terms of documentation, credits to Chris over here, um, in terms of how to actually use the projects. Um, and it also makes it easier for us to onboard new people moving forward. And then if you click into sponsors, it also has similar documentation over here. So in terms of showing you guys how the collaboration process works, it's probably easiest if I just make a project right now um, so you guys can see. So let's create a project. Uh, a project over here doesn't necessarily have to be a video. It's pretty much anything that anybody is doing. But in this case, let's just pretend that we want to make a video project. So click over here. There's a project template and say the video that we want to make is how to beep like beep beep. It's created November 7th, 2021 and say it's not going to be a sponsored video and the owners over here. I'm going to add myself as well as Tony who edits the videos. And then we can have over here pro project details. I don't know, um, a video about beep beep beeping, how to imitate something like that. <laughs> and then we can create a new task, say like script video over here, and then assign this um, to to me. And then let's say like the due date here is um, Friday. So we can do that and the priority, um, we, do we want this as highlights? Generally, we, we do want this as highlight. It's a video that we're currently working on and then it has a lot of different tasks as well. And then the next task over here could be um, after I script the video, I have to film the video. So that's another one. Assignee is also to me over here and then November 14th, something like that. And then another step that needs to be done over here is to edit video over here. And then I would be assigning this to Tony. If we want the publication day to be on the 19th, for example, then we probably want to put this as the 17th, right? So I will assign this task to Tony over here who would get an alert about this. And you know, if he's like, oh, this is unreasonable, I can't do that. He can be like, okay, I'm going to change this to like on the 20th or something like that. So this is how we can know what each person is doing and when are the dates in which they're supposed to get it done. 
Now I'm just like, should I actually do this video? <laughs> and then there's also a few other things that I want to show you guys in terms of collaboration. So we have our sponsors page. Um, I think I'm not going to show you guys specifically for each sponsor because we do have some exclusivity and privacy clauses over here, but it's very similar to a project section in which you will create a sponsor and then you add the specific information, uh, the different kinds of exclusivities that you have and other things as well. Actually, we can just look at the template over here. Sponsor task template. So is it prospective, investigated, ongoing, past, declined? And then for each of these, uh, we would just have specific information for them. And another thing I wanted to show you guys is the exclusive exclusivity calendar. This is something that Chris recently made and I think it's absolutely brilliant. So something I realized as I've come to take more sponsors is that some sponsors will tell you that there's an exclusivity so you can't do any collaborations with their competitors for a certain amount of time. However, this can be very difficult to keep track of because it's like, okay, these people don't want you to do like three months with four companies. And then these people don't want you to do like with some other companies for however long. And it's very hard to like keep track of that. And flipping through um, each of the contracts is also, it's it's like pretty time consuming and it's not the best. And then there's always like this, this fear that maybe I'm gonna get sued because I forgot that I wasn't supposed to collaborate with a company. So what this is, is that you have the sponsor and then it has like these little tabs over here where it tells you like the, ex the exclusion is gonna be at this certain period of time. Again, I'm not gonna open each of these because it's supposed to be kept private. I don't know what the exclusive exclusivity clauses are but if you open up each of them it would say like okay so you can't do like certain things during that specific time frame so this makes it so much easier because when we're thinking about a new sponsor we can just very easily see like okay is there any exclusivity i cannot i cannot say that word at all is there any exclusivity for that specific sponsor yes <laughs> so really love this functionality Here's also a deadline calendar as well, which is super helpful because if you know anything about me, if it's not on a calendar and I don't get a notification about it, I'm just going to pretend that it doesn't exist and not do it. So very, very helpful. <laughs> Propel, which used to be called Chronic Coder Academy. Propel centers around application-based learning. Fellows come from a lot of different backgrounds, like for example, students, uh, or people who want to change their careers, or people who want to up-level their careers. And in Propel, they're able to collaborate with cross-functional teams, and you end up building a project. And oftentimes, these projects are actually given from startups. So after you complete this project, it actually gets used. It's a great way to get a taste for one of these roles and how it actually functions in industry. I don't work on Propel on a day-to-day -day basis. So full credit for developing and operating Propel goes to these guys over here. And this Notion specifically was designed and populated by Joey, who is Notion's number one fan. Hey, I'm Joey, the head of UX at Propel, and I love Notion. All right, now let's jump into it. Okay, so this is the way that Propel looks. And I do want to emphasize here that Propel is public facing, right? Because there's people who are applying to Propel and there's cohorts that are being run and the different projects that are being built. Uh, so people are viewing it if you're an applicant, they're also viewing it if you're a startup who wants to collaborate with Propel. The branding and the way that it looks is really important. And in this case, the notion is almost like a website as well as a portfolio. So there's a lot of information that's being displayed here. So first let's talk about branding. As you can see, very beautiful branding that you have here. Really nice designs, The and then you have these emojis <laughs> that are consistent throughout. It's very consistent, well thought out, and aesthetic, and it just kind of fits the entire vibes. I really appreciate the simplicity of it and how utilitarian it is as well. So now let's actually click through some of these in detail to look at how information is being portrayed. Is this is where you start seeing how powerful Notion can be. Because Notion allows you to portray information in a lot of different ways, you're able to display the information in the format that is most suitable for that information. For program details and overview, it's pretty text heavy, but you have a little table of contents that you can click through. Most of it over here is written in text, and then you can actually uh, click through to each of these as well to see like more specific things. So in this case, we're looking at program specific resources um, and you can see it's actually displayed now in a table format as opposed to just as text or as a list. And this is really conducive because you're able to see which week it is, like what, ha what happens over here, what's the overview, and then also the resource that's linked over here. You can also see how powerful the database feature is for Notion. You can click through for week one, for example, you want more details and you can click over here and then it opens up as a separate page. So let me show you guys a few more examples of how information is displayed. So here for the projects tab, 
Um, this is where pictures and information from past seasons are stored. Feel free to go through them as a reference and slash or inspiration. So, okay, we have a project over here, say like Anna Extractor. Um, this is from season four. The status is ongoing. Branch is Chronicoder Academy and it's in phase number two. So you can also click on this over here and you can see who the members are who are currently working on this, where we have the common board over here, where there's collaboration that's happening. So you can have different tasks that are being done and then assigned to different people and they go from begin, prepare to execute. So you can actually easily see an overview of what is currently happening in this project. And then you can scroll down shared resources and the pitch, the problem, the solution. So as you can see, there's a lot of different views that are being done here and all of them are bundled together under each project. So there's a lot of other pages and examples I can go through, but I've already gone through a few of them. But do check out our notion. I really think it's done super, super well. And also if you're just interested in Propel in general, do check that out. So the last two things I wanted to show you guys are this very specific task that I use Notion for. This is my trading journal. It's super simple. Um, it's just for each row, it's going to be a specific trade. And then I just have, what is it? The currency is Forex, the date placed, date filled, um, entry point, stop loss point. These are things that I just track. And then if you click through each of these over here, I just talk about like why it is that I decided to enter at a certain date, what my assessment was, my reasoning. I can embed screenshots really well. This is one of the primary reasons why I love using Notion because I can embed these screenshots directly into here. So when I look back at my journal, I'm able to like very clearly see the market condition in which I enter that trade. And also my plan is over here. Um, kind of monitoring throughout as well. And then finally my exit, which I have not exited yet right now. But usually in my exit, I will also have a screenshot of what the exit looks like and any other comments or details that I would also put in here. So this is how I use the trading journal. And in this use case, it's specifically the ability of embedding things directly and having this table view that you can filter stuff that makes this really useful for me. And the other example I have is for workouts. So this is like way more simple than anything else that I've shown you. But seriously, I have for the longest time been trying to find something that allows me to do this. And it's like super simple. So let me just kind of give you a little bit of reasoning for this, like what I what I want. I don't actually like planning out what exactly I'm going to be doing that day. So what I tend to do is I tend to collect exercises through like whatever I see on YouTube or Instagram or Pinterest or something like that. And they usually fit into one of these categories and I want to try them out. So what I do is that every time I collect these exercises, I would just make like a, what is that called? Like a sub, a subcategory of each of these that I like doing. For some of them, I would have just a brief description. And for some of them, like say like playing to dolphin over here, um, I could just not remember how to do it. I, I often forget how to do it so I can actually embed these pictures on. So I'm like, oh, okay, so this is how you do it um, whenever I want to go to the gym and and do this exercise and before each gym section like say i'm on the abs day what i do is like i look at these exercises and i usually pick four to five different ones that i would be doing for that specific gym section and this is just like works wonderfully for me it's so simple but it works so well i can just keep collecting exercises so i don't end up just forgetting exercises that i want to try out and it also allows me to just choose whatever it is that i want to do for that specific workout i find that a lot of fitness apps they're usually like way more complex they always like want you to exactly design like what you're going to be doing for each day and you have to enter a bunch of information and in my case like this is all i want and this is absolutely perfect for my use case all right we've come to the end of this video i hope you found this video helpful seeing all the different use cases that you can use notion for if you're interested in notion they have a plan that's completely free that you can sign up in the descriptions below have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next live stream or video Thank you.